Welcome to question 10 of the 2014 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. So for question 10 we have a line intersects the coordinate axes at the points U and V with coordinates U, 0 and 0, V respectively where U and V are positive real numbers and we know that U is between 5 on 2 and 6. For part A, it says when U equals 6, the line is a tangent to the graph of Y equals AX squared plus BX at the point Q with coordinates 2, 4 as shown. And if A and B are non-zero real numbers, find the values of A and B. So first of all, if we know U equals 6, we now know that this coordinate is 6, 0. And now if we have two unknowns that we're trying to find, in this case A and B, we need two pieces of information to allow us to do that. So the first piece of information is the fact that we know that the point 2 comma 4 exists on the parabola. So we can substitute that into the rule. So the rule is y equals ax squared plus bx. So wherever there's a y we're going to replace it with 4. So we get 4 equals a times x squared which will be a times 2 squared plus b times 2. So therefore we find 4 is equal to 4a plus 2b and we're going to solve that for b because we're going to use substitution later on down the track. So we're going to say that b could equal 2 minus 2a and this is going to be known as equation 1. Next we have enough information to calculate the gradient of the line segment that joins q and u. So the gradient of any straight line is y2 subtract y1 divided by x2 subtract x1. So for this question we have the gradient is going to equal y2 which could be 4 subtract y1 of 0 over 2 subtract 6 and that will give us 4 over negative 4 which is equal to negative 1. And to relate that to the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx, we need to calculate the derivative. So we know that dy dx, the derivative, is going to equal 2ax plus b. So using the fact that the gradient equals negative 1, we can form another equation. And now the derivative dy dx is going to equal negative 1 when x is 2. So we get 2a times x, but x is 2, plus b. So therefore we have negative 1 equals 4a plus b. And we're now going to call that equation 2. So now we're going to solve those two equations simultaneously. And previously we solved equation 1 for b so that we could substitute it into equation 2. So when we substitute equation 1 into 2, we start with equation 2, which is negative 1 is equal to 4a plus b but wherever there's a b we replace it with 2 subtract 2a which is the equivalent expression for b from equation 1 so therefore we find negative 1 is equal to 4a subtract 2a just gives 2a plus 2 so therefore negative 3 is equal to 2a when we subtract 2 from both sides which gives a is equal to negative 3 over 2 so that is part of the answer to this question so we'll just put a box around that Next we're going to substitute a equals negative 3 on 2 into equation 1. Although you could have substituted that into equation 2 if you wanted to. So that will just give us b is equal to 2 minus 2 lots of a. We know a is negative 3 on 2. So therefore we get b equals 2 subtract and this is actually going to turn into a positive because we've got two negatives there. And then that is just 3, so therefore b is equal to 5. So they are the values of a and b that we were asked to find in this question. From the examiner's report we can see that 30% of students managed that question through to completion and that many students knew to set up two equations and solve them simultaneously. The most common error was to substitute x equals 6 and y equals 0 into the parabola's equation incorrectly thinking that the point 6, 0 lay on the parabola. So considering the same line, we now have for part B a rectangle OPQR with a vertex at Q that lies on the line connecting U and V. The coordinates of Q are 2, 4 as shown, 
And for part one of part B, we're asked to find an expression for V in terms of U. So what we do know about this situation is that U, V and Q all lie on the same line, which means that gradients calculated between each points are equal. So we could say that the gradient of VQ is going to equal the gradient of QU. And now if that's the case, we can use our gradient formula, which we spoke about before is Y2 subtract Y1 over X2 subtract X1 to calculate those gradients. So the gradient of VQ is going to equal V subtract 4 over 0 subtract 2 and that is going to equal the gradient between Q and U which is going to be 4 subtract 0 divided by 2 subtract U. And now our job is just to simplify this down a little bit. So we could write this as V subtract 4 is going to equal and multiplying both sides by negative 2 we would find that this is negative 8 divided by 2 subtract u and then if we add 4 we find that v is equal to negative 8 divided by 2 subtract u plus 4 so that is an expression for v in terms of u from the examiner's report we can see that 32 percent of students got the mark for that question and that some students were able to set up a suitable equation. However, errors in algebraic manipulation, which came as a result of poor setting out or working, often resulted in incorrect final answers to this question. For part two of part B, we're asked to find the minimum total shaded area and the value of U for which this area is a minimum. So there's two things that we're going to need to answer at the end of this question. One is the area, and one is the value of u. So we need an expression that will allow us to calculate the area. So the area of that shaded region is simply equal to the larger triangle which connects O, U and V. So that has a area of a half times the base length of U times the height of V. And then we're going to subtract away from that the area of the rectangle which just has an area of length times width which is 2 times 4. So therefore, the area that we're dealing with in this question is a half times u, which can be written as u over 2, times v. But we had an expression for v that was in terms of u. So it was negative 8 over 2 subtract u plus 4. And I'm just going to change it around slightly to be 8 over u subtract 2. So that's just cancelled a negative factor in the top line and the bottom line of that fraction. And then we're still going to have plus 4 and then we're still going to have our minus 8 which is subtracting away the area of that rectangle. So therefore the area A in terms of the variable U is now equal to and if we multiply out this bracket we actually get 4U over U subtract 2 and then we're going to get plus 2U minus 8. So that's an expression for the area solely in terms of the variable U now. So for questions like this, you need to think about what you can use from the previous parts of the question to help with future parts of the question. And in this case, we needed V in terms of U to progress to this point. Now, if we want to find a minimum, usually that would involve calculating the derivative and setting it equal to zero. So therefore, we're going to calculate DA DU, which is the derivative. And this will actually involve the use of the product rule, which I'm going to do quickly here. So we're going to have everything divided by v squared. So we have u subtract 2 squared. And then we have the function v, which is u subtract 2 times the derivative of the top line, which is simply 4. And then we minus the top line u times the derivative of the bottom line, which is simply 1. So that's the derivative of the fraction. And then the plus 2u minus 8 just has a derivative of plus 2. So setting the derivative equal to u, we have 4u minus 8 minus 4u on the top line, which just leaves negative 8 over u subtract 2 squared plus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, when we rearrange that equation, we actually find that u subtract 2 all squared needs to equal 4. So therefore, u subtract 2 must equal plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2, which gives u equals 0, 
or u equals 4 as possible solutions. However, u equals 0 is outside the domain, and that domain was back up here where u was between 2.5 and 6. So the area that we're going to calculate is when u is 4, so a of 4 is equal to, and we're back to using this equation that we found back here. So we're going to have 4 times 4 on the top line is 16, divided by 4 subtract 2, which is simply 2. Then we have plus 2 lots of 4, which is 8, minus 8. So therefore, that area is going to be 8 plus 8 minus 8, which leaves 8 overall. So the area is 8 units squared. And now this question is just slightly more complex than your usual min or max problem because it has endpoints that need to be tested because they're likely to be another minimum or maximum value. So testing the endpoints will be a necessary part of this question. So first of all, we're going to find the area when u is five on two. So just working through the formula that we put the purple asterisk next to earlier, we're going to have four times u, which is four times five over two, which leaves 10. And then we're gonna divide that by 5 on 2 subtract 2 is dividing that by a half and then we're going to add on 2 lots of u which is just going to add on 2 lots of 5 on 2 is just adding on 5 and then we still have subtract 8 and that is going to equal 20 plus 5 subtract 8 which is going to equal 17. So that area is bigger than 8 so it's not a minimum area and the other endpoint that we need to test is going to be when a is 6. So substituting that into the equation is going to be 4 times 6 gives 24, divided by 6 subtract 2 is 4, and then we're going to add 2 lots of u on, which is going to be adding on 12, and then we subtract 8 from that as part of the formula, and that's going to equal 24 on 4 is 6, plus 12 minus 8, which equals 10. So now after all of that working, we're now ready to answer the question. And that is that the minimum area is equal to eight units squared when our value of u is four. So that is the answer to part B, I of this question. From the examiner's report, you can see that only 9% of students got both marks for that question, with 74% of students getting no marks for the question. And based on the report's length, you can see that it was quite an involved question to complete. Overall, the question was poorly answered by students. A complete solution to this question required the setting up and evaluation of the area statement involving one variable, and then testing the turning points or stationary points, as well as endpoints to determine that minimum value. Many students set up overly complex equations for the area, or had difficulty in differentiating their equation correctly, which we required the use of the quotient rule on the previous slide. Other students did the reverse by simply assuming that u equaled six gave that minimum area. For part three, it asks us to find the maximum total area this time, and the value of u for which the area is a maximum. So we need two things for this response as well, the maximum area and the value of u for which it occurs. So the maximum area, if you think back to the previous question, was found to be 17 square units. And we knew that that occurred when u was equal to five over two. So this question didn't have as much space dedicated to it in the exam because you were expected to find that information essentially in the previous part of the question and then just reproduce your conclusion as the answer here. So from the examiner's report, we can see that this was also answered poorly, just like the previous question, with only 8% of students getting this answer. Many students who attempted this question did so incorrectly by assuming that the value of the maximum area occurred at the local stationary point they'd found previously. Some students only gave a partial answer to the question, meaning that they didn't give both u and the area, they just gave one or the other, which meant that they couldn't get the full mark for the question.